Commercial ABS include many different sectors, and each sector has specific fundamental driver. It's hard to use one framework to analyze different type of collateral. So first, we view ourselves as a lender. We try to partner with a company who has a profitable business, using collateral as a key part of their operating assets, and also relying on the ABS market for funding. We try to avoid players who use ABS market to sell assets. And the next part is focusing on the collateral and the structure. Different from the corporate bond, collateral and structure can provide potential downside protection in the stress scenario, which can avoid potential principal loss and also mitigate the impairment risk. To identify value opportunities within my sector, I have to think about potential risks that investors may be exposed to by being put into a certain investment. Uh, some of those potential risks include liquidity, credit, convexity, and more generally, uh, variability around cash flow timing. Generally speaking, when we view potential risks in a transaction, such as those I identified in others, we tend to seek more compensation for those risks for our investors. We also look over time to see how much a given set of risks is being compensated versus how much has been compensated in the past and how material we view potential risks to be today versus where they may have, how risky they have, may have seemed in the past. The way we think about good value opportunities in ABS is really, you know, it's performance based. How is the underlying collateral performing? It may be on the consumer side or not the consumer side. So really we start with a top down top-down macro view. On the consumer side, as, as I mentioned before, we've talked about unemployment, but then on the commercial side, it may be global travel. We really are thinking about where what's going on in the macro universe, and as that funnels down, we work our way to security selection or sector selection. Because the LP space broadly is challenged with the realizations as the private equity market has slowed, LPs are specifically looking for liquidity, and they're willing to pay for that liquidity. Paying for liquidity can come in multiple formats that can either be in the yield that you get or the structure that you're able to negotiate with the issuer. We have a lot of tools at our disposal, including in-house proprietary models and third-party models. Outside of kind of the staples, I think a lot about spend thinking about the total macro data is what's given by Equifax or Experian, the data that is really coming out of the credit bureaus that is thinking about not just the subsleeve of the structured universe that we're thinking about, but as the macro picture as a whole. So because specialty finance is so diverse and there are so many different flavors and types of transactions, at Luma Sales we've, we've developed a comparative list of the sorts of transactions we see. And so when we see a new transaction, we're able to benchmark that against previous opportunities that we've seen and compare and contrast to see the strengths and weaknesses. And specifically within private opportunities, we're able to negotiate with the issuers and seek to address some of the issues that insurance clients specifically face. The in-house modeling our team works on is, for example, would be a loss volatility model. We take losses across the different product types, look at how performance has changed month over month, thinking about how the volatility of that performance has changed month over month, and kind of assess where losses could potentially go and help us to forecast our losses going forward as we're looking at the deals. So we use different tools to analyze company, structure, and the collateral. On the company, we use SP Capital IQ to understand the balance sheet of the company. On the collateral, we use, for example, on the aircraft, we use Redbook to analyze aircraft value. And for the structure, we rely on the Intex to model the cash flow through waterfall. It also allows us to assume punitive assumptions to model the downside risk, to try to mitigate potential principal loss and the impairment risk. And honestly, one of our other tools that, I don't know if you can call them a tool, but is our relationships with the issuers. Those one-on-one -on -one conversations that I have with the issuers of sitting down and saying, what are you seeing on the front lines? In structured products, it's a very unique asset class. We are actually getting paid by those people sitting in the call centers, on the front lines, taking the calls and saying, will you pay your bills today? Well, that cash flow in a long winded way makes it back to the bond investor. And that's how we get paid down month over month and the deals amortized down. So 
They are one of our greatest tools is having those strong relationships with the issuers. 